What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the rapper Drakeisha, aka Drake, coming at Serena Williams and Megan Thee Stallion, two black queens, just existing and living life while being black and queenly. And I know some of y'all asking and wondering, you know, well, why did Drakeisha come at Serena Williams and Megan the Stallion. Well, Serena Williams, Drakeisha came out because she moved on, got married, and had a family without him. How dare she, right? How dare she? And, you know, what about Megan? You know, what did Megan do? Well, you know, Megan was allegedly pow powed by rapper Tory Lanez and was brave enough to tell. She was brave enough to come forward and name names. So yeah, you know, Drake Keisha out here just coming for black queens. You know, you know, coming for black queens like Serena Williams and Megan Thee Stallion accusing Serena Williams' husband of being a groupie while Drakeisha has been spotted at many a basketball game hugged up and from the looks of it trying to get booed up and knocked up with some basketball players, some ballers. But ain't that just like a preference though? Ain't that just like a toxic preference to, you know, come at the black queens but then be all hugged up on the black kings. You know, and I'm saying this, I'm like, dang, Drake Keish, like, save some ballers for the other groupies out there who may want some high value ballers. You can't have all of them for yourself. Don't be greedy, feed the needy, or quench the thirsty, because it looks like there might be some thirst up in there too. But really, though, why didn't Drake Keisha just shut up and eat her food? That's all you had to do, just shut up, eat your food, and just release your regular music that you've been releasing. But instead, you want to come, come through clout chasing. And I'm not sure what you clout chasing for. And folks love mentioning Megan the Stallion for some reason. I guess she I guess she popped and she a hot topic, so it's like, hey, let me ride off the wave, right? Cause, you know, the rapper the baby, you know, he mentioned that him and Megan the Stallion basically slept together. And you know, that could be true, that could not be true. Who knows? I'm not sure if people really care all that much other than just to shame Megan Thee Stallion. But if it is true, I guess Megan Thee Stallion wasn't really feeling it because she kept it pushing. Outside of like the business musical side of things, because they had like a few songs together. All right. But back to Drake Keisha, though. But, you know, in regards to Drake Keisha. You know, out here clout chasing at the expense of Serena Williams, you know, and her family, and Megan Thee Stallion. You know, it ain't right, but it's okay though. It's okay because what Drake Keisha don't know is that these ballers that Drake Keisha is hugged up on. Copping feels on, cheesing so hard at. I'm like, dang, Drakeisha, she looked like she done just found the one. She looked like she done just found the golden ticket. Drakeisha looked like she just done secured the bag, right? But, you know, the thing is, though, Drakeisha, what you don't know is, while you trying to go for your own championship ring, Spoiler alert. Or spoiler alert. You ain't getting a championship ring. Alright? Because these dudes ain't going to be Mary and Drakeish. 
They're just going to knock up thirsty Drake Keisha and leave her a single, bitter baby mama. About nine or ten months later, this going to be what it is. And y'all going to be seeing Drake Keisha on Instagram live getting kicked out of her Black Kings home like Danny Lay. Oh, y'all thought we forgot about Danny Lay? Nah, we ain't forget about you, Danny Lay. A.K.A. Yellowbone gone wrong. A.K.A. Yellowbone with no home. A.K.A. Yellowbone phone home. So, go ahead, Drakeisha, because karma is coming for you. Um, but, with all that being said, I do want to pose the question, you know, can biracial men be trusted? And this is in regards to black women, right? And ultimately, long story short, as a collective, I don't think so. I would say no. And a lot of people have theories on why they say no. Because it's like, oh, well, if the father is black, then don't trust them. <laughs> right? <laughs> If they were raised in black culture, don't trust them. If they were raised by their non-black mama, don't trust them. And I do those. I do think that those are valid reasons to be suspicious. And I think ultimately, um, when it comes to biracial people and their ex their feelings and sentiments when it comes to black women. I think that, and just black people in general, um, I think that it is strongly, but not always, but very much so, dependent upon the relationship that the biracial has with their black parent, be it their black, be it their black parent is male or female. So whether they have a black father or a black mother, it depends on their relation, their black parent. And also, if their black parent is just a total wild coon on the loose or not. And I know some people may feel, well, their parents are swirlers, so that in itself means that they're a wild coon on the loose. And there's an argument for that. I don't think that's completely true, you know. And also, it depends on them and their non-black parent because if they're raised by their non-black parent and their non-black parent has anti-black sentiments then that's going to play a factor too and there are some people who argue that they feel like biracials who are raised by black mothers and non-black fathers seem to have less you know anti-black women sentiments which you know it makes sense, you know, um, but, you know, sometimes there's anti-black sentiments or anti-black women sentiments in those in that particular segment of biracials as, as well. And, you know, I'm not trying to say all this just to say that you can't trust nobody, no biracials or nobody, because really, well, to an extent, I do kind of think that that is true. You know, black women, you know, you have no allies, you have no one you can trust, no one loves you, no one is there for you, no one besides other black women will advocate for you, you know, but I don't really want to send a message like that because... You know, it's very, like, doom and gloom and depressing, and it's just like, oh, well, you know, black women are alone, on their own. And, you know, while I do think, uh, sadly, there is some truth in that, I do think that on individual levels, you know, black women do have people who are willing to be allies and willing to advocate for them when necessary and but um, regarding biracial men, um, since that was initially the question I posed, um, long story short, I would say as a collective, no. Individually, perhaps. You know, perhaps there are some out there individually who, you know, are willing to, you know, be on the side of black women and, um, 
you know, or at least very much just not be against black women. You know, I personally don't think that Drake is against black women. Um, I don't think so. At least based on what what I know so far, I just don't think that that is exactly the case. I just think that uh, it's a combination of just clout chasing and trying to touch on topics that people seemingly care about. You know, but on the flip side, there are some things that I feel like are like low key shady about Drake that people ignore. Um, I'm pretty sure, I feel like there's some sort of a video on YouTube that's titled something like that, where they just kind of go down the list of shady things about Drake that people ignore. And uh, some people may argue that Drake didn't really come for Serena. He came for her husband. And there's an argument with that, definitely. Um, but people feel like Serena ended up being kind of like collateral damage in the situation, which perhaps that may be true. Um, but on one hand, it would be, you know, Drake speaking about the real stuff, you know, like rappers speaking about their actual past relationships and things like that, thus making their artistic work have more like meaning and feeling to it. On the other hand, it sort of comes off as, you know, I guess, like, just hateration and people not being able to let other people move on in peace. And also, you know, Serena Williams, she seemingly moved on to better, or at least the same level. But, like, Drake... It looks like he kind of like, well, he took like a massive step down when it came to who he ended up having his son with. And I also heard that he knocked up uh, another, you know, adult film actress. Like the first one he knocked up there, the rumor is that she was black. And somehow, some way, he made her terminate the pregnancy. Um, but the second one that he knocked up, um, she's white. And for one reason or another, her pregnancy was not terminated. So Drake is like the groupie that got got by a groupie. And then Drake also spoke about or rapped about Megan the Stallion. He didn't point blank mention Megan the Stallion's name, but it was just like enough. He said enough to the point where people can just make the inference and draw that conclusion that he's talking about Megan the Stallion. And he's saying, like, you know, that she fabricated about getting shot. Uh, pow pow. And you, I think, I don't really think he should be putting out a narrative like that, that she, you know, fabricated something like that. I think if you were to put out a narrative, it probably would be, well, you know, based on the evidence that has been presented thus far, it does not seem as if Tory Lanez is the one who pow pow Megan the Stallion. Perhaps it was her friend who was in the car with her, who she's no longer cool with, who it is rumored that was originally with Tory Lanez, then Megan Thee Stallion, she jumped into the situation and, you know, pursued some type of a relationship, whether romantic, sexual, other with Tory Lanez. And I know that probably is not going to fit into a rap zone, but I'm just saying though. And, you know, low key, there's some shady things about Megan Thee Stallion that people kind of ignore. But if anything else, I feel like Megan Thee Stallion and her situation with Tory Lanez, I feel like, if nothing else, it it does expose that when a black woman is a victim, a victim of some sort of a crime by a black man, especially if the crime is some sort of a, you know, a violent crime of some sort, 
the question that a lot of people are going to ask is, you know, what did she do? As if somehow, some way, she must have brought it on herself or, you know, perhaps have been deserving of something like that. And as I mentioned in the, you know, a couple of previous videos, again, the hierarchy when it comes to who is prioritized in the black community. Since Megan Thee Stallion is a black woman, you know, a brown skinned black woman, and she's accusing a black man of some sort of a crime, it's it's seen as the person with the less or the lower social standing that's go against going against the person with the higher social standing, with the, at least within the black community, right? But if it was the other way around and Megan the Stallion, Pow Pow, Tory Lanez, then it would have been like, why does she do that? She ain't have to do that to that dude. That's why we got issues in the community now. Wow. That's why I don't trust none of them. I got black sons. I got black brothers. I got black daddy child. What about my baby daddy that never hardly come and see their child and only pay a little bit of child support, girl? That could be him. And then even the dudes be on some crap like that, too. Or right, something... Uh, basically something more like, you know, sometimes women get out of pocket. Some you got you gotta put women back in check sometime. And you know black women, black women got a lot of mouth. So do. And then a pig me should come and think, yeah, that's true. You know us black women, we do got a lot of mouth, sisters. Sisters, we gotta admit it. We got a lot of mouth and we wear too much weed. We got to admit that, sisters, the brothers don't like it. They telling you they don't like it. You better listen to the tang, sister. But I heard that Tory Lanez was put on house arrest for some reason. I didn't read too much into the article. I just saw, like, the title. But I heard that Tory Lanez was put on house arrest because of something to do with this open case with Megan Thee Stallion. And I really hope that this case just uh, hurry up and gets closed you know and justice is done whoever is at fault whoever is the true victim whoever is the true victimizer i really hope that justice is served uh but before i go i do want to mention something um that has to do with megan the stallion that is more on a positive note and that is megan the stallion she has actually launched a website for people, especially black people, um, there's um, some resources for black girls and black men who are interested and perhaps are in need of some mental health services of some kind. And her website is a website that is used to help point people in the right direction where they can get those services. Um, sometimes I think they may offer those services um, for a fee, and some of them may be offered for free. And the name of the website is Bad, B T I C T H E S, Have Bad Days Too. And that name of the website is taken from some lyrics from her song called Anxiety. That's on her um, sophomore album. Traumazine, I think the name of it is. Or at least I think that's how it's pronounced. Traumazine. And I do think this is, you know, it's great that Megan Thee Stallion is using her platform to talk about um, mental health. And, you know, um, the uh, Latino Colombian rapper, um, J Balvin, he actually received some sort of a reward or award from... Uh, the United Nations very recently for his um, mental health advocacy. So perhaps Megan Thee Stallion may be getting some some of, some sort of reward too, or award too, for her mental health advocacy. I do think that the website perhaps maybe could have chosen a different name. Um, one because well, you know the word B T I C T H um, B I T C H is. You know, a little controversial. 
And also, if she's offering, you know, mental health resources or at least a directory of those resources for men, perhaps like the name, you know, I'm a bad B, you know, <laughs> you know, it might not be as attractive for men. You know, if the website was only for like women, especially black women, then, you know, Definitely, even though that could be controversial too, where it's like, well, why black women got to be called B-I-T-C-H's, even though like a bad B-I-T-C-H is a good thing, not a bad thing. But I, I can see some people having some issue with that though. But on the flip side, I'm thinking, well, maybe Megan just wants to like, quote unquote, speak people's languages or people's language that may, you know, kind of be a little more, you know, around the way. You know, a little more who, a little more, you know, I don't, I don't want to say ratchet, or, you know, a little ghetto ratchet. I, I don't think those are probably the best words, but you know what I'm saying, though. Um, You know, perhaps like an alternative name that could have worked both ways could have been, you know, goats have bad days too, like, you know, the greatest of all time, you know, a bit more gender, gender neutral. But nevertheless, um, you know, kudos to Megan Thee Stallion for doing something like that with the platform that she has. And I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next for Megan Thee Stallion. But I think that's about all I have to say for the moment in regards to this topic. So let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now. But before I go, let me tell you a little bit more about Drakeisha, though. Because Drakeisha, I tell you, Drakeisha be with all the ballers. Drakeisha be in all the spots. She might just be in your kitchen, jigga, cooking with your pots. But really, though, Drakeisha, she know how to get a baller, though. Drakeisha know how to get up in there and get a baller, though. Black women, y'all better take some notes. Y'all better ask Drakeisha for the cheat codes. Don't be too proud. Don't be too prideful now. Don't be mad at Drakeisha. Don't be mad. Drakeisha just want the best black cane like you do. But seriously, thanks a lot for watching. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now.